Dan Lambert is a consulting ecologist at High Branch Conservation Services based in Heartland, Vermont. He provides grant writing and coordination support for science and stewardship projects that involve multiple institutions. He got hooked on monitoring and adaptive management 20 years ago while working as a, on the BMC sponsored study of the Mountain Bird Community down Mount Mansfield. So uh, please join me in welcoming Dan and then our panelists. Thank you. Very glad to be here. Uh, welcome the panelists up onto the, to the stage here. Let's get it set up. I appreciate the opportunity to, to moderate this panel and also learn more about the work of our very accomplished presenters. Carl Honkinen, Tony Lynn Morelli, and Colin Beyer are going to help us explore uh, different ways in which uh, using indicators of ecosystem condition uh, can, be, uh, can help us plan and adapt management of forests and watersheds. And in the first talk, Carl is going to share some insights about forested riparian buffers. Uh, Tony Lynn will then introduce a regional uh, initiative to uh, uh, improve management of invasive species, especially in the face of climate change. And then finally, Colin will talk about how he and his colleagues are going about assessing um, the combined effects of various agents of change on uh, forest ecosystems and ecosystem services. And although these panelists are approaching their work from a variety of perspectives, they're all part of a tradition of adaptive natural resources management that has been at the heart of the Vermont Cooperative, uh, Vermont Monitoring Cooperative since its very beginning. I'm sure many of you are familiar with uh, one version or another of this diagram, which presents an approach to managing uh, natural resources that has roots in ancient civilizations, but was only formalized in the last 30 or 40 years, most notably by C.S. Halling and uh, uh, Carl Walters at the University of British Columbia. Um, now, as ecologists, they were, of course, fond of natural cycles, especially those that have this uh, continuous flow. But since many of you probably work in various phases of this adaptive management cycle, you know that it does not uh, flow continuously on its own, that it's actually um, powered not like, say, the water cycle is powered by the energy of the sun um, effortlessly. You all power this cycle uh, with your own uh, grit and uh, curiosity and, um, and determination. So I, I want to acknowledge all the efforts that you bring to this work. And I'm um, and, and curious to know by a show of hands how many of you all participate in the top of this adaptive management cycle as people who plan management activities or participate in the, in the development of environmental policies. Just raise your hand if that's part of your work. Very good. Great to have you here. And whose work involves uh, implementing management plans or carrying out some environmental policy decisions? Raise your hand if, if that's your bag. All right. And, um, and finally, raise your hand if you've been involved in the monitoring or evaluation of these management activities uh, and assessing their effects on ecosystem conditions. Wow. Look around. These are your people. Um, and the Vermont Monitoring Cooperative is a way for us to complete that cycle and to continue to keep that cycle moving. For scientists to report on their findings to planners and managers, for planners and managers to update uh, scientists on their latest information needs, and also to adjust their planning based on uh, understanding of, of uh, the new data. But I suspect back in 1991 when the BMC founders um, were conceiving of this conference, they saw it also as an opportunity uh, to fulfill the promise of a, a different model advanced by uh, another leading thinker of the time. This one emphasizes the value of learning from how others pursue similar goals. So here's how we'll approach the next uh, 90 minutes. Each speaker will have about 15 minutes to share their presentation. That will then be followed by two or three minutes of uh, question and answers. 
Um, following the three uh, presentations, we'll have a 30-minute discussion in which we will field uh, questions from the audience um, that are uh, cutting across the, the common themes of, of each of those individual presentations. If you would like uh, to present a, a cross-cutting question um, that occurs to you during the course of one of the presentations, and I encourage you to, uh, to write that down if you would like, um, we will have uh, Diana and John, I believe, at the and John at the back of the room and Diana up here in the corner. Um, looking for you, you could simply try to, to try to catch their eye, um, flag them down and share that, or we'll also be taking uh, questions by raise of hands on the on the floor. 